Hey everybody, how's it going? I am Q at the Geek, and this is Shenzhen IO in real life, part three, the box. Okay, so for just a quick reminder, in this part we're going to go through and design the camera shell for our project. We're going to be doing this in a software called FreeCAD. It is available on Windows, Linux, and Mac, and it is free and open source and available to use. And also just one quick note, um, I have had a few people ask me about the, the style of the last episode being kind of difficult to follow for a tutorial, and I just wanted to, to make sure I added the note there that the, this series is not meant to be a tutorial series. It is meant to just show some of the processes that I use, and I am actually planning on making a tutorial series for KiCad, the software we used in the previous video. And uh, if there's enough people who want it, I'll go over some of the stuff with FreeCAD that I do. My, my big caveat here is that I am not a mechanical engineer. I'm an electrical engineer. And so I'm not very great at FreeCAD. I can get through and get things that I need done. And you'll see that as we go on with the video. But it's not my forte. And uh, I just want to make sure that that's clear. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get on to the video. Okay, so we're going to go ahead over here and start up FreeCAD. Give that a second to load up. We're going to create a new part, a new body, and a new sketch. We're going to want this on the XY plane. Let's go ahead and open that. And we're just going to start by creating a simple rectangle. Let's go ahead and give this some dimensions. So this is going to be 45 by 67 that's going to give us basically some uh, outer dimensions for our walls so we can have two millimeter walls as well as a little bit off to the back where we're going to have um, our cutout for the back door to insert so we're going to do that this gives us the part we can go create pad and make that 50 and there's our box Next thing we need to do is we're going to click on the front here and we're going to create another sketch. Let's create the iris for our camera. So we're going to just do two circles, bring them out to here, and add some dimensions. So the first one is going to be 15, the second one is going to be 10. And now let's get these oriented as far as the origin goes. So it's going to go up 30 and it's going to go over to 22.5 that will be the halfway point and then give us 30 up so that it'll have a little bit of space for our leds to come in here below let's close that and we're going to create another pad this is going to be 15 so that it looks a little bit more normal a little natural i guess um, so it doesn't look so small and sunken but um, it will give us enough that we need so Next, we're going to click on these two um, features. We're going to create a fillet. And uh, we're going to make that a two millimeter fillet so that it rounds that out and makes it look nicer and more clean. So let's go do that. The next thing we need to do is we're going to come back here and click on the back side. We're going to create another sketch. So let's come in here. This is actually going to be the hole for everything. So let's start by making this 41 by 46. And that gives us enough play on either side. I'm gonna set this so that our walls are two millimeters. I'm gonna do that on both sides from the origin here. That gives us our fully defined fully constrained sketch. I'm going to do a pocket and that pocket is going to come through 65. So that should take us up here and now there's a two millimeter wall on this face. Call that good there. And we're starting to see a little something. Let's go ahead now and we're going to add the holes for the LEDs. So we're going to create another sketch. We're going to come in here and create some holes. 
Now, keen viewers might notice that uh, I tried to adjust the circuit board so that um, the LEDs were 10 millimeters from the sides. And it turns out that when I did that, I did it on one of the t LEDs, but I didn't do it on the other. So let's start this from the bottom here. We're gonna want these to be up like 12 millimeters. So let's set both of those. Oop, not 15. And now for the one on the left, we're gonna come in here and that's gonna be 10.8. And the one on the right, actually to make this a little bit easier, let's grab this feature here. Um, we're just basically telling it to make this line reference geometry so that it can use that. So instead of coming from the origin over here, we're coming from that corner, which we're gonna make that 12.5. And there we go. We're gonna make that a pocket so we can cut through there and we're gonna take it down to just two, just so that it only goes as deep as we intend for that face to be. Um, I always do this as a precaution just so that if I break something, um, for example, if I break the previous pocket that we just made, then I'll, I will be able to notice because this is going to be coming through and, you know, let's say the last pocket gets changed to this front wall being five millimeters, then I'll be able to see it because I'll see the actual solid surface underneath there. But we can see that this is cut through, so that should be good. Now the next part we're going to do is we're actually going to create some guides for the PCB to go in. So we're gonna come back here and click on this surface, create another sketch. We're gonna go ahead and grab a little bit more of our reference geometry so that uh, we can play with this a little easier. Now for this, we're gonna actually go through and create four rectangles, well, two rectangles and two squares. Let's set all of them to be two millimeters. And then for these top two, we're gonna make these two millimeters as well. But for the bottom two, we're gonna make them five millimeters. Now, let's go ahead and we're going to align these two points. That will nicely snap those into place. And we're gonna align these two points. And now, we're gonna bring these over so that we have a nice gap. So let's tighten these in. So we're gonna turn that down to zero. And that will bring those two walls together. And we're gonna leave a two millimeter gap between these so that we have space for our circuit board. And now we have our, our features here. By the nature of 3D printing, there is some squish that happens with the plastic. And so it will actually close this gap down to be a little bit tighter than that two millimeters. So we're just kind of building that in so that our circuit board will still go in without any problems. So now let's go ahead and add the pocket here. I think we just lost our part because we're going the wrong way. There we go. It basically sees that there's this zero reference geometry and it breaks the whole thing. So we have to reverse it so that it's going the right direction. And this will go through the full body. We're gonna take that to, oops, not 95, 65, or 98. I was off on my keys. So 65, we shouldn't have any coming up through, protruding through the front. And that gives us that. We're looking pretty good. We've got our guide rails, we've got our holes, and we've got our iris. If we really wanted to, we could put another hole in here so that if I, I did ever want to get an actual camera module, for example, for a Raspberry Pi Zero, and throw the camera module in there, I could do that. And uh, I could add some features in on the back side here so that I'd be able to mount that with some uh, screws or something, but I'm not gonna do that for, for this version. It is something we could do, but I'm not going to. So the next thing we need to do is we're gonna create the lip for our door to be able to slide into. So we're just gonna come back to this face here, create another sketch. And again, we're gonna grab some reference geometry. I don't really need to grab all of them, but just to be uh, on the safe side, that's what I'm doing. So we're gonna do a few more rectangles in this kind of orientation. We're gonna make them three millimeters here. We'll make this one three millimeters as well. 
we're going to make these because these are going to be our guiding constraints. We're going to make those 32 millimeters. And then again, we're just going to go ahead and grab these two points and make them concentric. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just grab this guy. We're going to make that 35. And then we're going to make these two points concentric and that should give us our fully constrained part. Now, another thing we do have to worry about is um, it doesn't really like that this line is in here. It's not going to see that as a full feature. So what we're going to do is we're going to come to this trim tool. We're going to trim that and we're going to trim that. And those are both now going to be broken. So you can see it does break our constraints. It says that it's underdefined, but we already know that it's where we want it. So we're not going to worry too much about that. We could go through and make sure everything is constrained, but I don't plan on changing much of this, so that should be okay. Go ahead and close that. We're going to make another pad. Again, we're going to need to reverse it. And this pad, we are only going to have two millimeters, so it's not as thick as it's trying to make it. That gives us our lip so that our door will be able to slide into that. Now we're going to come down here to the bottom, create one more sketch. Again, we're going to grab our reference geometry. We're going to create another rectangle. This is going to be four millimeters, which it looks like it was already close to. And we're going to make this 45. And then just make these points concentric. There we go, fully defined. We're going to turn this into a pocket, so it's actually going to come up through here and cut. And that pocket is going to be 17. That will take us up through into there and give us space that we need. So hit OK. And then for one final part, what we're going to do is grab this face and create another sketch. And this time we're going to create the same three rectangles as what was already there just to give it some backing. And then this is where things get a little tricky because the plane that we're currently on is this plane. We're going to have to come in here a little bit funny and now we can see our points. So we can go ahead and come in here on this, grab that point, and this point. Those should now be lined up. You'll notice I did do this 31 and that's actually because we did cut away a millimeter when we added that. So just accounting for that. Same thing on this side. And that sketch is ready to go. Again, we're just going to create one more pocket, reversing it to go the other direction and giving us two. Now, as you can see, we have this little gap here that we'll be able to slide our door into. Now, one more thing just to make this pretty, we're going to go through and select a bunch of these edges and add another fillet on. You can make multiple selections just by holding down control. And there we go, there's our body. There we go. I'm gonna just go ahead and save this now. And save. And there we go, there's our body. So now we've got a new part created. Let's go ahead and start creating the rectangle for the body. I'm going to go ahead and throw that on this plane here. It doesn't really matter because we'll have to move it around and manipulate it anyway and when we get to bringing the whole assembly together. We're going to make this 48 just so that it fits the area of box. And this is going to go ahead and be 4 millimeters. Now we're going to create another sketch on the face here. We're going to create two more rectangles that we're going to use to cut out some of that surface. Let's grab our dimensions. Three. 
31 and 31. Okay, and again, we're just gonna go ahead and make those points concentric and do it the easy way. Okay, fully constrained, let's go ahead and cut pockets. It's gonna go through the entire part. Now we're going to create another similar sketch, but this time we're just gonna grab these geometries. And this one is gonna be basically our, uh, we're taking our four millimeter thick piece. And we're gonna cut it down in just these places so that it is two millimeters just so that it's a little cleaner that way. But these lips we're gonna make three millimeters here to go with our corresponding cuts. Now, I'm not leaving as much space as we did on the last one because um, for tolerance wise, because this is something that can be sanded down after the print, so any issues with tolerance can be resolved that way. And we're going to create another pocket, but this is only going to go through two. And now we have this edge that kind of reminds me a little of the old uh, Game Boy cartridges, actually, the uh, original Game Boy. The last thing we need to do is just to come down here and we're going to grab these two edges because of what we did on the previous one. We're going to fill it those down so that they are one millimeter. And that's our door. There you go. We're going to go ahead and save this now. And another thing we're going to do, because we're going to want to bring this into the original camera body design, is we're going to export this as a step file. So FreeCAD's a little weird, the first thing you got to do is select the entire body, export in the same place, and it is a step file, and this is camera door. That's exported now. Let's go ahead and start the next one. And this part's gonna get a little weird because what we're gonna try to do is create an elbow and make it look rounded. I did wanna go through and make uh, a ball and socket joint, but frankly, that's something that I'm not really sure on how to do. So I figured I'd rather not jump into something that I'm not confident with. So we're just gonna do something that will work and uh, that we can call good. And so we're gonna go ahead and start here. This is gonna be the plate that actually connects our camera to the mount. So we're gonna go ahead and just make this little 15 radius circle. And create the pad, two millimeters as before. We're kind of keeping uh, something of a standard here. And that's what we're what we look like. Now, let's go ahead and select the face. We're going to create another sketch. This is actually going to be a square that we're going to make eight millimeters by eight millimeters. And we've got to put this guy centered. And there we go. Now this part's gonna start looking really weird really fast. Take this to 50. Now we're gonna come over to this face because we're gonna make a feature that's gonna come out of it. We're gonna do this very similar to the part that we already have that's coming out of our base plate. So we're going to make another 8x8 eight eight and bring the corners together. We're going to make this one 50 as well so that we have enough space to clear the camera. Now, 
I kind of want to give this a, an elbow look. So we're going to go through and come into here and see if we can select this corner, create a fillet, and we're going to make that eight millimeters. That's to try to match with what we're currently doing. You can go ahead and hit OK. Now we're going to grab the other side. This one is where it gets a little weird. If we uh, go ahead and do eight here, it's not going to like it. It's not going to change because of just an error in dimensioning. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to put in 7.99, so it's very close, and that will get us the radius we want. And now the next part is we're going to try to make the entire thing cylindrical. There is actually a way to do this if you can sweep it, um, but I, again, don't really know how to use that functionality here, so I'm not going to show you things that I don't understand myself. Okay, so we've grabbed all of those edges. We're gonna create one more fillet. And this one we're gonna do kind of similar to the last where it's gonna be 3.99, um, just so we can get that four. And again, it's because this line here pretty much has to exist so that it doesn't break the geometry. And that gives us our elbow. It's not pretty, but it works. Next, we're gonna come down to this plane. Let's go ahead and close that, actually. Come to this plane and create another sketch. And this is going to be our plate that mounts to the wall. We're going to make this 30 by 30. We need to come and grab the geometry of the circle here that'll give us that midpoint. We'll set this to 15 and set the other to 15. Another pad, out two. And then because we do want this to be something that we can wall mount, or that would appear to be wall mountable, we're gonna put some holes in this. So let's come to this here and we'll make a sketch onto this plane. We're gonna grab and just make some circles. And now we're just gonna go ahead and set these circles to 1.75. That will give us some space to be able to use a three millimeter screw. A little bit more geometry here. And we're going to bring these in five millimeters from both sides. So let's go ahead and set all the verticals first, and then we'll get the horizontals. That's all constrained. So I'll just turn those into pockets. Again, using two just so that it's cut correctly. And then we're actually gonna give these a little bit of a chamfer just so that if we wanted to countersink some screws, for example, we could do that. We're just gonna make that a nice little one millimeter chamfer and call it good. So there we go, there's our part. Let's go ahead and save it. And again, let's export this as a step file. All right, now for the fun part, we're gonna come back to our initial body here. And we're gonna import some step files. So we're gonna click File, Import. Let's go ahead and grab this is our, our board, so let's go ahead and grab that. It's gonna go think about it for a second. Okay, there's our board. So we have it here, let's go ahead and transform it. So this is where things get interesting. We're gonna bring this as close as we can. A little too close it looks like. Rotate this around 90 degrees. This is not exactly a great way to do this, but the tool, well, the tools for doing an assembly, I don't think currently exist very well through FreeCAD. So we're going to kind of fiddle with it and just make it 
look like it works for us. So we're just kind of getting it socketed into our slots here. It looks like it needs to come down just a tick. And now we can move it through. So the nice thing is now we can actually go through here and see where our board sits. We can check here to make sure that our battery has enough clearance and that our parts aren't interfering with anything. But everything looks good. Let's go ahead and we're going to bring in our door. Looks like it brought it right down there. So it kind of hit it from us. And let's do some similar manipulation just to rotate it around. There we go, it looks like everything fits in okay. The, there's no real overlapping lines to see. So we know we got our dimensions right. Again, this won't be perfect, and especially when it prints, there's gonna be some, some things here that we're gonna have to go through and do some post-processing to clean up, but that will be just fine. Now for our last part, we are gonna go ahead and grab the mount. And this one we don't exactly have a great point already picked out, so we can just fiddle with it a little bit and see how it comes out. That looks about centered on the body. That should be good enough. Now let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. Not too bad. That should be at least something for us. I mean, it definitely looks like a fake security camera, but that should be okay. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the mechanical side of everything. So I'm going to go ahead and export this to an STL file. That's what my 3D printer uses. So I can go ahead and slice that down and get it printed for part five when we come back and revisit this and build everything all together. Just a reminder, for the next episode, we're going to be going over the firmware. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned for that one. But for right now, that should be it for this episode. So as always, if you liked the video, hit that thumbs up button. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. But go ahead and make sure you tell me in the comments below what you did or didn't like about it. And I'll go ahead and make sure I read through all of those and apply those to the next episodes. I really do appreciate it, and I, I love to read the comments. Um, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell so you get notified as soon as the episodes come out. Thanks for watching along, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.